So same exercise, but for a different equation. So the equation in part B reads, y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 12. So let's see how this is done. And let's work out the coordinates of the stationary points and let's determine the nature of these points. So back to the paper and pen. So here is our equation. So step number one, let's work out the turning points first of all. So if I refer to the previous example, so in step number one, find dy over dx. So back to this example, y is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 12. So when I differentiate, dy over dx will be 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. So that is what you should have for the first derivative for y. So this takes us to the next step, step number two. So if I refer to the previous example, step number two is to find the x coordinate of the turning point, we use the condition dy over dx equals zero. So back to the current example. So for turning points, dy by dx is equal to zero. So this is what we have for dy over dx. It's 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. Let's equate that to zero. Now I can reduce this uh, quadratic by dividing by three. So if I divide by three, I'll get x squared minus 4x plus four is equal to zero. And I can factorize here. So if I factorize the left hand side, that will factorize to x minus two squared, which in turn is equal to zero on the right. So I only have one x value, the x value being two. So that is the x value of our turning point. That takes us to step number three. So for step number three, let me refer to the previous example. To find the y values, we put the x values into the equation in question, which is the curve equation for y. So going to the current example, here is our equation, y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 12. So if I put x equals 2 into this equation, so let's do this. So put x equals 2 into y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 12. So here's the equation for y that we have in the question. So y will then be x, which is two, so it's two cubed, minus the six, x, which is two, so two squared, plus the 12, x being two, plus the 12. So if I multiply, two cubed is eight, two squared is four, 4 into minus 6 is minus 24. 12 into 2 is plus 24, plus the 12 at the end. So the minus and plus 24 terms can cancel each other out. So I make the y value 20. So this is the corresponding y for x equaling 2. So I've got one turning point having coordinates when x is 2, corresponding y is 20. So that is the stationary point part of the question done. So if we go back to the screenshot, we also need to determine the nature of this point. So if we go back to the paper and pen, so remember referring to the previous example for the nature, step number one is to calculate d2 over dx squared. So let's move on to the current example. So we have dy over dx calculated. It's 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. We need to differentiate this again for dy over dx squared. So for nature, step number one, d2y by dx squared. So let's differentiate dy over dx again. So I wanna differentiate 3x squared 
that is 6x. When I differentiate minus 12x, it's minus 12. Differentiating a constant is 0. So we have 6x minus 12 for d2y over dx squared. Now, this takes us to step number 2. So let's refer to the previous example. Step number 2 is to put the x value of the turning point into d2 over dx squared. So, moving on. So, let's put the x value uh, into d2y by dx squared. So, we have the x value of our turning point. So, let's refer to uh, our previous step. The x value is 2. Okay. So, if I put x equals 2 into our d2y over dx squared, we're going to have d2y by dx squared being 6 into x, which is 2, minus the 12. And 6 times 2 is 12, minus 12 gives us an answer of 0. Now, if we go back to the screenshot, so remember, if d2y over dx squared is equal to 0, that means that the test is inconclusive. So we need to conduct further tests in order to check whether this point is a point of inflection or not. So I've constructed a table and I have values of x 3 and 1 which are greater than and less than where the turning point is situated. So the turning point is situated where x equals 2. So x equals 2 is our point of inflection. And remember, at that point, dy over dx is 0. But if I calculate dy over dx for x equals 3, I have plus 3. So it's positive. And for a value of x, which is less than x equals 2, so I chose x equals 1. And if I put x equals 1 into dy over dx, it's plus 3 as well. So it's positive also. So if we refer to the screenshot where I explained um, what we mean by the term point of inflection. If we go from positive for dy over dx to a zero for dy over dx to a positive for dy over dx, or if we go from a negative for dy over dx to a zero for dy over dx to a negative for dy over dx, this means that our turning point is a point of inflection. So in this case, we go from positive to zero to positive. So our turning point is indeed a point of inflection. So that completes example one, part B. So that also completes the video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found the video useful. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related problems and I hope to see you again. Thank you.